doing. Okay. There are two, they are very tough decisions. And regarding yeah. the flag as well, I just want to yeah. bring up that there's both sides of that coin there. And, yeah. and God bless the, not only the, the people in Brigantino who have lost their lives and throughout our county, our, our, our state, our country. It is very sad. I just, my, my thing is just that we're fighting hard for these people collectively, everybody throughout the nation from locally right here, right on up. And, uh, you know, I just, I just wish, uh, you know, I just, I just, I just think uh, a, a 10 day thing up the line would, would along the lines of what they do for like a chief justice or something like that in honor right. of all those people. Uh, right. would be good. In the meantime, we're just fighting hard for everybody. <laughs> Right. Thank you for everything, Mayor. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dennis. Thank you for your concerns and everything else. Rick. Thank you, Mayor. Um, let me start with uh, congratulations on the new grandson. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Val. Keep everybody uh, socially distancing and safe. Yeah, absolutely. And and secondly, I want to thank you, Mayor, for the comments you just made because I don't want to scare you by saying this, but they mirror my own thoughts in a lot of ways. We. <laughs> We are put in a position here, and I think people understand it, but sometimes when you hear some of the comments that get made outside of council and you know in, in the media generally, uh, I think maybe we, we have to reiterate where we are as a council and where we are as a city in terms of what we're faced with and how we have to deal with it. And Andy, you know, God bless you. I'm, I'm happy for myself that it falls more on you that you have to take the questions and I'm sure the accusations right. and other sentiments um, right. that are tough to answer because we don't have answers. But I think that your your guiding principle that you just stated is exactly the one that we should be following and need to follow, which is number one, our first job, keep people safe. That's keep correct. them healthy to the extent we can. And let's not be arrogant about the things we don't know. We know the illness is out there. We know it spreads like crazy. We don't know, in many cases, who has it, who is potentially a carrier of it. We, things we do know, and this is not true just to Brigantine, but you know, throughout the, the area that's affected by it, we know, besides the fact that it's highly contagious, that it has an incubation period. We're not sure how long an incubation period that is, but we know that social distancing does help. How much it helps, we don't know, but there's no question. It's saving lives and maybe saving a tremendous number of lives. It's not a question either of you know balancing hurt somebody's personal liberties against the the public interest. You know, if I'm wearing a mask, that mask is not to protect me. It's to protect everybody else in case right. I'm the carrier. You know, it's not about me. As council people, every single one of us is just as frustrated and you know upset and and troubled by the fact that. This thing seems to be going on in an open-ended way. Our lives are all disrupted the same as everybody else's who's listening to this meeting or living in town. And uh, our businesses are disrupted. It, none of us like it. Nobody wants to hurt our economy, hurt any individual business, hurt anybody and their freedoms. But that's not the question. The question is, knowing what we know, how do we balance it? And you were asked, Andy, for a, a timetable in terms of the rental. We'd love to be able to, I know you would, I would be, sure. I'd love to be able to give people a timetable. You can't right. do that. It's just not possible. We don't know. What we do know, as I said, besides social distancing and taking a cautious approach to it, we know that there's a logical process being put together at the state level for implementation throughout. And part of the logical process is, as it has to be, based on measurement the measurables that we can determine in terms of testing, where there appear to be, you know, concentrations of people who are infected, uh, where it's rising, where it's falling, you know, data driven, making intelligent decisions based on that. And we're not going to wait until there's not a single case, obviously not. But we're also, I think we would be reckless in the extreme if we now said, and it would be totally arbitrary if we did this, okay, in 10 days, everything's going to go back to normal. Well, that's, that's not within our power to control. I wish it was, we all wish it was, but it's not. I, I appreciate the efforts of, of everybody individually who is trying to comply and complying with the restrictions that are in place as, as frustrating and as you know, difficult as it is. And my last comment is on the other side of that, people like this operator on 13th Street we need to come down on them with everything we have. 
because that Correct. is pure arrogance and greed. Now, I don't know the individual involved. I know only the facts I've heard described, and I, I believe them to be 100% correct as they were described in today's meeting. These are people who are simply making their own judgments. They do not give a crap about the safety of the people of Brigantine or the people they're renting to. They've done the numbers and figured out, I can rent this place for X dollars and it's only gonna cost me something less than X, even if I get fined every single time. Those people have no place in Brigantine. That kind of attitude has no place. And I'm sure this will happen anyway, but let me give my word of encouragement to this. Drop the hammer on people like that. Correct. Uh, other than that, stay safe, stay healthy. <laughs> thank you, Rick, and thank you for the words. Uh, you know, like I said, this isn't political. You know, uh, this isn't Republican or Democrat or anything like that. I, you know, I see the stuff on Facebook and you know social media. You know, uh, we could we should go up there and, and grab Mayor Simpson and pull him out of office by his neck. Uh, I don't care about that. I don't care, you know, the social media a aspect. And I told Vince Sarah, you know, a long time ago when we started doing this stuff, that we're not going to we're not going to do business by Facebook. We're going to do the business the right way. I, I'm a businessman. I want you to make money, and I, you know, it's not like I don't understand things hurting you or anything like that. And I'm not out to hurt anybody. I'm out to help people. But I, sometimes you have to do stuff to help yourself, you know, to be alive in, in, a, in a problem we have right now. So I just want everybody to be clear that, you know, not here to hurt anybody. We're not here to hurt Brigantine. We're here to help the citizens of Brigantine. We have a obligation of 10,000 people that we have in Brigantine to make them all safe. So that's our responsibility, like uh, Mr. Luper said. So I thank you for those words. And uh, I'd like to go over to uh, Councilman Reardon. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, all right. Um, first of all, Congratulations on the grandchild. He's got Thanks, the same Bill. kind of hair as you, I see. Right now, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. secondly, I want to thank everyone for tuning in today. It's absolutely uh, fabulous to see the amount of people that are that tuning in and interested in what's going on and the concerns. Um, next, um, I guess, um, you know, we've uh, had a few different issues over um, over the last few weeks since this all started. And um, the newest one also is concerned with, uh, I think you might have brought it up earlier, Mayor, but now with the um, season opening up soon, uh, we want to help our business community as much as we can. So um, Correct. We're, um, we're in the process, uh, myself through the economic development committee i know the chamber of commerce angela has has had an opinion on it i've worked with several of the council members here on their thoughts and ideas including the mayor uh, about the expanded outdoor seating so we've been working on that all weekend we've talked to uh, many of the business owners uh, because each restaurant and business is a, a different case so we're looking at that individually i understand uh, from from the mayor that the governor's going to be coming out with some uh, an order uh, defining the, the the restrictions on outdoor seating. Uh, we've had concerns with the uh, serving alcohol outside if we expand the seating outside. So there's a lot uh, going on there. And um, Mike, what I've basically asked the governor's office to do is if we can give us the power, not the planning board or anything like that give us the power to okay people pulling their their uh, tables out into the parking area or so far six foot away from the sidewalk area so it's uh we're safe by walking around them um but also this is why you know i have to stay on the governor's conference call is i need permission to bring the alcohol out into that area, whatever we deemed 
um, that we're allowing people to do. Yeah. So, yeah. The house, the house to go out. And some of the places we can't do it. Some places are already maxed out. But well, uh, it's a slippery slope because then you have to correct. still have that six foot space for people to walk through and, and bypass. So we're looking at suspending parking, maybe uh, not definitely. So we're looking at a lot of different things. We had concerns from the business people. So we're looking at it just like, um, with the grace period for the taxes. We've had concerns from residents and taxpayers. So excellent job, Vince, on spearheading that and the mayor requesting from the governor. I mean, it's phenomenal stuff. That's what we do. Just like when we had concerns from people about uh, visitors coming over the bridge and roadblocks on the bridge, we all work together uh, on trying to send something up to the county. I know Councilman Haney refers it to me as me, but Fred, our, our solicitor uh, okayed it. Everybody worked on it. So that's that's that. But um, well, nothing happened at the county. Know, though. So anything, um, you know, we're always concerned about the health and safety of the seawall. And I got to tell you one more thing, Mayor, and everyone else here on the um, on the on the meeting, is that before the seawall and the Bird Tower and the Cove Beach were closed down, I know that I received many, many calls from residents about people sitting down up on the seawall, gathering, getting together. And I, all I can tell you, I know Councilman Latiri and Councilman Deputy Mayor Sarah also, as long as the mayor got called, we probably all did. But, you know, since those um, restrictions were put in place and they're only temporary, uh, right things have calmed down an awful lot. So for the sake of health and safety, um, it's, it's a very good thing. Uh, so that's, that's about it uh, for the most part. Other than that, you know, it is um, Older Americans Month. So we want to, um, you know, we hold our older Americans, uh, cherished and valuable members of society, deserving our utmost respect and gratitude and admiration and I just want to recognize that for this month, many of our uh, older uh, Americans have been through so many things, so uh, and fought and, and served, like Councilman Latiri in the, in the military. And uh, we just want to say thank you, and uh, just remember it's Older Americans Month here. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sheriff. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> You're welcome. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate the Simpson family. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, the birth of a child, and love yeah. the pictures. I love them. They were great. Um, also, too, uh, the mayor and I do talk a lot about, um, I guess, the messaging that goes on on social media and out with the city. And um, there's a lot of negative information and a lot of misinformation out there. You know, one of the things we've been doing for probably a little over a year now is uh, putting out a newsletter and trying to communicate better through the city to make sure that people actually know what's going on. And obviously, you know, people are free to post whatever they want. Their freedom of speech, they can say whatever they want. But it's also important to hear from us as council directly. You know, if anybody's interested in signing up for that newsletter, you can shoot me an email at uh, V-S-E-R-A at brigantinebeachnj.com. Or, you know, go to the city's website, send me an email, I'll sign you up for the newsletter. This way, at least, you know, you can see our statements, our position, and a lot of the good things that's going on here in the community. It also provides a good forum, too. If people have questions, you know, you can shoot questions and get your questions directly answered. This way, you know, it kind of helps us to communicate. It helps us to keep people in the loop as to what's going on. Um, also, with these times, it's very, very challenging, especially for us as council. A lot of the decisions that we would normally have the authority to make have been taken away from us under the governor's executive orders. You know, the mayor's doing an outstanding job communicating on behalf of Brigantine and on behalf of um, council uh -huh. concerns and trying to work stuff out. You know, we're all trying to work together because the most important thing is, is the health and safety uh, of everybody, not, you know, not just in our community, but in the entire country. So we're trying to do our part to keep people safe. I can tell you though, you know, we are looking towards, you know, what's going to happen in the summer when it comes to our beaches, when it comes to our, uh, our opening up the economy again. And I can tell you every option's on the table. Um, 
hardest thing for us is that there are no direct guidelines. Information continuously changes. You know, so people ask us for dates, ask us, you know, for when are things going to happen. And the problem is, is that a lot of this is being dictated down from the state. So we're trying to do our part to look at what the state's doing, get that information out there and put Brigantine in the best possible position. And, um, you know, as we can, we're communicating that information now. One of the things we really like to wait for is, you know, sometimes the governor and other state officials talk about things on their conference calls, but we really do wait until the governor puts that executive order out in writing so we have something concrete to stand on so there's no confusion. So we're doing our best to try to make things go forward. Uh, the other thing too, which is kind of a good sign, Earlier in this, the governor has actually broken the state up into different regions, allowing each county's health department to make decisions locally. And we're hoping that this will be a big help as we start to move forward. Uh, right now, the cases of COVID-19 are very, very high in North Jersey, but overall in South Jersey, they're low. So if that trend continues, this could be a good sign for South Jersey and help us. One of the things that people are concerned about is when North Jersey has already saw their spike and their big swing, South Jersey is just starting to see its swing. So the governor is concerned that as we start to open things up, and this is all of the South Jersey communities, what impact does that have on the numbers in South Jersey? I know some of the states that have already started to open up have reported out that their cases of COVID-19 have gone up. The governor is taking a look at that, and that's being conveyed out through um, our county officials as well. So there's a lot of information, a lot of decisions that are being made. And I know our, our um, <laughs> Andy, I just promoted you to governor, but I, I know okay. our Mayor is uh, doing a great job advocating on behalf of our business community, advocating on behalf of our citizens and making sure to keep counsel up to date on everything that's going on. And it is a very, very time consuming and challenging situation. I'm gonna commend him on his hard work on putting all of us in a position to make sure that we can help the people of Brigantine. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Vince. And at least you promoted me to governor. Uh, Lynn Sweeney uh, <laughs> threw me out of office <laughs> last week. So, uh, well, you know, we talk about how hard we work, how we do things and stuff like that. I, um, I was getting an operation yesterday and I'm getting on the operating table and I actually, uh, the guy got me back cause I was calling him one time and, uh, he was getting his operation and, uh, his operation was more, Serious to mind, it was uh, Fred Cerny, because I was trying to get the legal aspect of this. What what can we do? What can we do with the restaurants? What can we, you know, making sure everybody's prepared? And he he called me and I said, I'm sorry, Fred, I can't talk right now. I'm getting on the operating table. He goes, Well, good luck and uh, call me later. And uh, hopefully he's on this uh, um, phone call and or zoom that he uh, he sees i'm i'm still alive and everything else and it was refreshing you know like rick talks about you know he's a democrat i'm a republican and we talk about we don't talk about that stuff uh, the governor office called me one time it was uh, a saturday night and says, listen, tomorrow we're going to pass this ordinance and it might hurt you. I said, well, we already talked about it the other day. He goes, no, the only questions I got was from Jesse Tweedle, which is the mayor of Pleasantville. I said, well, his lawyer and my lawyer are the same person. And there was dead silence because nobody ever heard of that before. You know, Fred Cerny is a Democrat. He was in the uh, he, was a, he was a freeholder, and uh, I call them freeloaders, but uh, he was a freeholder for the, the uh, for the Democratic Party. And, and then when we got into power and stuff like that, it wasn't who was the best, who was the worst, right? who was the best for the job. That's what it was. And Fred Cerny actually uh, came out shining like a star at that time. So under this... What we're doing now, it's not Democrat or Republican. It's, you know, human beings, and, you know, we're doing the best 
to keep people alive, even, even if they don't want to keep themselves alive, you know, by doing stupid stuff like uh, uh, worrying about having a dog park open right now. Go walk your dog around. The, you know, still can walk him in the street and, and collect his uh, his, his mess and, uh, and discard it into the local trash. So we're, we're in good shape. We're, we have 16 cases. That number keeps going up every week, so I don't, I don't want to have anybody thinking we're going to open up things just because of people complaining. We have to stay inside. We have to stay away from each other. We have to, you know, basically, I don't, I don't see anybody. There's three people in my house, and they stay with me. Wherever we go, it's those three people go with me. Uh, like yesterday, they came with me and took me and dropped me off and uh, went to a, uh, a place that was quarantined and uh, they came back and picked me up. So I certainly appreciate that. And I certainly appreciate every member on council, every member, uh, the Democrat, the Republican or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're just doing the best we can do to keep our citizens alive right now. and. Uh, I just want to make sure everybody um, understands that. So, uh, see the beaches, um, we're going to get notification from the governor. Hopefully, he allows us to do stuff. Uh, I talked to our city manager, and we're going to open up with four or five beaches on Memorial Day, maybe more now. We don't know yet see what the beach requirements are from the state of New Jersey. Um, Karen, you never yes. said anything about the golf course. I, I, I forgot about that. Go ahead. I'm going to let you go there. Okay. The golf course is back open again as of last Saturday morning. As per the governor's very strict rules, um, tee times are made for only a twosome, not a foursome as in the past traditionally. Um, they are also spaced out at uh, 16, 16 minutes, I believe 16 or 18 minutes apart. So it, it's uh, a, a lot of social distancing. The, right. only, the only way people are able to ride in a cart together are, is, is if they cohabitate. So okay. if I wanted to go out and play with one of my friends, we'd have to take two carts. Um, things went very well. We had some members who volunteered the ranger last weekend to try to make make sure everybody was uh, doing their social distancing and making sure that everybody who had gotten used to walking on the golf course and strolling around the riding bikes, walking their dogs, make sure they realize that it is now back to being a golf course. Uh, we had a lot of people out there just walking and playing, taking their kids out to play on the course, and now that is just restricted just to golfers. Also, the, the restroom facility, according to the governor, are all closed, and uh, all public restrooms in the state, I believe, are closed. And they don't allow you to have a pencil and a scorecard, so if you want to go out and you make your tea time, make sure you bring a piece of paper and a pencil your own pencil to keep your own score but we are back up and running and hopefully we can turn things around and soon go back to foursomes with eight minutes apart but the course is in beautiful shape thanks to john during and all the groundskeepers it is really really looking good thank you okay thank you karen okay i'm gonna ask for a motion to adjourn Andy, I think we need to do the. Um, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm. Wait a minute. Where's my? Up oh, there it is. Uh, I need to. I need to point two uh, board members to the board of education. And Nancy Probone and Helen Kaufman. Uh, second. I think that's my my. My appointment. Uh, I didn't know if we had to stack in it or a vote on it. Okay. I don't know. I'm going to ask Lynn. That's Andy's appointment as a okay. type one school district. Don't we don't have to go?
go through the motions or anything. Yeah, Nancy and Helen. I'll let the school know. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any any other comments? If not, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, I'm going to thank everybody that, who joined in to our May 6th uh, council meeting. And we'll probably have uh, a lot of information coming May 20th. Our next council meeting, it will be by Zoom. Uh, we'll be at one o'clock in the afternoon. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of rules and regulations on that meeting with uh, Memorial Day coming up. I'm sure the governor will have it out at that particular time. So I would like to thank everybody who uh, joined us. I'd like to thank council. I'd like to thank uh, our, our city manager, Fred Cerny, and uh, also John Doring, our public works. You guys are great. Do a great job. Thank you, and I'll see you on the 20th. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. God bless you. God bless Brigantine. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm not closing the meeting. Okay.